The Taipei Rebellion, but it's wacky white people instead. So this is an alternative universe where instead of in China, the Taipei Rebellion actually takes place in a very strange North America. So it might be safe to assume this takes place somewhere around the same time period as this historical event. Just because a lot of these states in the West aren't really fully established. They're all like really wide boys, unless you get closer to the East Coast, which that looks a bit more normal for us. But then there's the cherry on top. The US for some reason controls all of Mexico at this point, which is probably only going to add to the chaos. So the real Taipei Rebellion established this heavenly kingdom over here, and they also had this guy who was the self-proclaimed little brother of Jesus Christ. And as most conflicts go in China, a lot of people weren't going to make it out of this alive. But in this scenario, it looks like the rebellion has begun in Illinois and Indiana, and they've begun to expand their heavenly kingdom into Michigan and Ohio, only in, no, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it. There's also many uprisings happening in New York and the East Coast, all the way down to the northern parts of Alabama and the peninsula of Florida. So again, if this started at the same time the actual rebellion started, we'd be around the year 1850. And something to keep in mind is that a lot of the American population was still over here. There wouldn't be a lot going on over here. So it's probably a good thing that the rebellion started this way. That's smart world building right there. Oh, and to top it all off, I guess this U.S. rebellion actually took place because of the Mormons. What a wacky scenario indeed. A universe where the French and Germans actually loved each other. But not only do we have a united France and modern day Germany, but they have some fellow brothers they've taken down with them all of the lowlands like Luxembourg, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Meanwhile, also all of Austria as well. And now we have the different subdivisions of how this empire would be ruled. Maybe this isn't even an alternative universe, it's just a look into the future. I mean, technically speaking, we have the modern day German and Austrian borders. They also have the island of Corsica and the Mediterranean, which France owns. This is literally a Charlemagne's Empire 2.0. This thing existed in the 9th century. They actually had a lot of northern Italy for a time there too. This is literally like looking into the worst nightmare of the British. They've been afraid of something like this happening for like a thousand years or more. A universe that connects South Korea to Japan by highway. It is both a highway on land and under the sea. So obviously if you're going to connect these two countries, you're going to want to do it at the closest point. Probably not a good idea to start the highway in like Kyoto or something. So their plan is to island hop their way over to this peninsula. So we're first looking at a 20 kilometer ocean tunnel. It's about 12 miles for my Americans out there. Then 50 kilometers to Toshima. Luckily they have a long vertical island to work with all the way up to this tip. But then it'll be another 52 kilometers between Busan and Tashima. So actually it looks like this isn't just talking about the underground part. It's just saying from city to city how long it would take to get there. So maybe this isn't quite so bad. That's my biggest concern. For reference, the English Channel Tunnel or the Channel is 31 miles. That is the underground tunnel that connects the UK to France. And considering they were able to do that, maybe this is somewhat possible. Maybe I'm wrong because the longest road tunnel is actually labeled as in Norway. The problem here is establishing just one of these connections is is maybe doable. It's going to be really hard, but doable. But establishing all three, that would be the tough part, especially when you don't get much out of just making one connection. The whole point is to kind of get from the Japanese mainland to the South Korean mainland. And I guess the idea for this has actually been around for like a hundred years. Maybe in another 100 years, we'll possibly see this thing happen. It'd be kind of cool if it was a train though, I gotta admit. What if the USA had their own century of humiliation? Again, the century of humiliation was another thing that also happened in China around the same time period we were talking about before. China was just getting beaten up by all sorts of surrounding powers for like a hundred years. But I guess in this universe, that whole thing is actually going to happen to America now. And clearly this must have occurred around the same time period, judging by some of these borders. So first things first, Texas is still a part of Mexico, or at least it's a puppet state. Meanwhile, Mexico still retains some of their old lands like California, Arizona, and pretty close to Colorado. The U.S. was able to take some stuff from the old Mexican empire though. So I guess since that was the case, this century couldn't have been that humiliating. I also love that the Republic of Texas also has their old territorial claims, which has always been some of the strangest borders I think I've ever seen. We also have the Plains Confederation here in Oklahoma, and actually a little bit more than just that. It is an autonomous region, probably held by Native Americans. Meanwhile, the U.S. also didn't beat out Canada to get to Washington. They never got this part of Cascadia, although they got Portland at least. There's also a very strange empire coming out of the Caribbean, and I believe how this occurred is probably the Spanish never left Florida. This has always been under Spain control. So if you look at a map of their territorial height, that must be something pretty interesting over there. Maybe that new nation still isn't under Spain, but it is a federation with Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Florida. Oh, and I guess even the Bahamas too. Maybe more people joined, not just like old Spanish colonies. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with this one. I have no idea how this even popped up. Is this like the Civil War? This is the Deep South, but they only got Atlanta or something? I've been able to explain a lot of this stuff up until this point. I don't know how this came into being. Something else that I almost missed though 
is during the century of humiliation for China, there was a lot of European powers that had ports along the coast. This went in with like just the bullying tactics, I guess. In fact, we even still have remnants of them even still to this day. And if you look closely at this map, you could see the same exact thing happened to America too. We have the British which control the New York and Boston ports. We have the French up here with Port de France. There's even the Germans that got a little bite. France who still controls Orleans, their favorite Louisiana colony. And then finally, probably the worst of all, we have Russia in San Francisco. Although they kind of named that to something else, I guess. So this really has been a very tough hundred years for the US. I don't think they could even recover from this. Definitely a 10 out of 10 for me. The eight ways to divide the continent of Australia. Although it appears this Australia is very different from the one that we all know today. Now the concept of Australia having a massive inland sea has actually been around for a while. I think they've even considered doing this artificially, although I think that would be maybe a disaster. But let's see exactly what happened in this universe. So in this first division, we're going to divide this continent politically. So this tan color is the Republic of Tasmania. This green is the Commonwealth of Australia. And I'm not sure how to pronounce this last one right down here. There's clearly three different countries that are on this landmass. Problem is, one of them is going to be a lot more populated than the others. I'm looking at you, the Commonwealth of Australia. I mean, there's going to be people up here in the corners and like in Perth, but it's not really going to be as much here, especially because they control this both sides too. So because that's where all the population is, that's probably where a lot of the money is going to be made. The really green green signifies the money money. Also, this is just all broke, I guess. But they're also divided on a faith basis. Most of this area seems to be either Protestant or Catholic, but there's also some Aborigine faiths, some Islam in the north, and a very small pocket of Hindu. Now, I think in this scenario, this continent has a little bit less desert, at least than they do in real life. There definitely seems to be a bit more vegetation in the middle here now. The language map is going to show us exactly how colonization took place. They still speak mostly English down here, so this was probably colonized by the British. But then they have French up here, which explains why I couldn't pronounce the name of this country. Then there's Aboriginal, uh, some Indonesian, Vietnamese, Chinese, and also there's Portuguese for some reason. There's only really a couple of spots for tourism, obviously, and, well... Yeah, I think we got this. Definitely makes this continent a bit more exciting since there's more things going on. And to top it all off, does the wildlife get even more insane in this universe? Flags I saw while driving around Tokyo, USA. Me and my wife decided to drive around Tokyo because we had nothing else to do and we were both off of work. This is what we saw. Thank you for the explanation. But just judging by some of these flags, I can already see this is a very different alternative universe. Very different Tokyo. Because this man and his wife saw 40 US flags, I'm guessing, uh, yeah, I think think we have a Japanese colony on our hands, and that would make it the biggest city in the U.S. Tokyo currently has a population of almost 14 million. Our closest to that is only New York at 8.5 million. Very interesting Japanese state flag, because Japan is, I guess, a state in this universe. Decided to change it up and go with a weird shape, like Ohio. In this universe, is Japan memed like Ohio is? Here's the city flag of Tokyo under the USA. The Japanese heritage flag, or in other words, the old flag in this universe. One person had the old imperial flag. That probably wouldn't fly. They saw three Italian flags in their little drive because a lot of Italians came to Japan after WW2. Some LGBT flags, Jubilee flags. Wait, did the US colonize Japan or the Philippines? Ten Tokyo Typhoon flags. Japan recently won the Super Bowl. Old Imperial Seal. There's some Korean heritage in Tokyo as well, I guess. Three Mormon flags. I guess uh, the Mormons might have set up headquarters in Japan in this universe. Also, uh, yeah, of course. Wait, does that mean the US controls all the car industry pretty much now? Like a good portion of it. Galactic M Empire 2. Really love the way this was set up. We have to use our imagination just based off what this guy and his wife saw flag-wise. I wonder how much Japan would love football in this universe. A fake propaganda poster talking about the Mongol Wars. This is a world where not only the Great Mongolian Empire has survived, but also the Aztecs as well. So I'm assuming they were not only able to fight disease, but also steal away the advanced technology from the Spanish and maybe use it to their advantage to control more of North America eventually. Because right now they've extended their borders all the way up to the Great Lakes. The issue is, it appears the Mongolian Empire wants some of America. They plan to send a massive Mongol invasion fleet, possibly to Virginia. Also, a southern invasion fleet to Florida. This is Aztec-controlled Florida, by the way. And this was, of course, made by the Aztecs. We don't know exactly if this is what the Mongolians are planning. Again, it is a propaganda poster. But considering the Mongolian Empire was this large almost a thousand years ago, it's safe to say that if they are still looking like this, by the time they're able to make propaganda posters. They probably have pretty much like all of Europe, maybe large parts of Africa. Maybe they weren't unsuccessful in trying to invade Japan twice. I think it's safe to say that this would probably be pretty successful just because, yeah, the Mongolians are huge in this universe. We don't know how big they are. 
but it's safe to say they're probably big. I wonder who's up here too. Is this some sort of other native tribe? Is this like the Iroquois? Also, the perfect meme to follow up with how this might have happened. Boys with a time machine. The allies are gonna attack Normandy. Uh, really? Versus men with the time machine. Here's some vaccines, books about agriculture, marine navigation, and metallurgy. There's also land across the ocean to the far east with lots of gold and people to sacrifice. Thank you, kind stranger, as they say in response. I guess that's all it would have taken. I don't know if that necessarily keeps the Mongolian Empire alive, though. I don't really know how you can save the Mongolian Empire now that I think about it. Have Genghis just live forever or something? Anyways, like the poster, 10 out of 10. And big thanks to my patrons. Drew, I forgot to kidnap you. Next date is March 19th, 2023. The Polish, Lithuanian, Quinn, Quinn Taylor, Portugal John, is Denver, not Balkans, Good old Ryan, 244, Iowa, aka Drew, if you don't come to crack Drew's, out Poland, I will find you in Grandpa. $20 uh, is a lot, Drew. Why am I Taylor doing this? Drew does every boy $20. Dan Traven's annoying friends. Robert Rush, Anime, Drake, Ralph, Weekend, Hamster, 